Number 51. The sun radiates energy at the rate of 3.8 times 10 to the 26 watts from its 5,500 degrees Celsius surface into dark, empty space. The effective temperature of deep, deep space is negative 270 degrees Celsius. What is the increase in entropy in one day due to this heat transfer? All right. Uh, so basically, uh, we need to figure out the total change in entropy here All right, for this entire system. So basically what's happening is the sun is radiating energy, right? Meaning it's losing a certain amount of energy. And if the sun is losing energy, something else is gaining the energy. What's gaining the energy in this problem? Well, deep space, okay? So essentially this could be equal now to, so the change in entropy, right? Uh, the total change for this system will be equal to then the uh, change in entropy, right? We'll call it of the uh, cooler object minus then the change in entropy of the hotter object. Why is it minus the hotter object? Well, because the hot object loses heat energy, right? If something if something hot is radiating heat energy to something cold, which is always the way it works, hot to cold, that means that hot thing is losing energy. And then that cold thing is gaining energy, all right? So breaking now these up into their respective formulas, according to this formula down here at the bottom, <clears throat> we would have something that looks like this. The total entropy change, now I really should be saying per day, right? Because they want to know the increase in entropy per day. So the total entropy change per day is going to be equal to the heat gained by the colder environment per day, right? Divided by the temperature of that cold environment, minus then the heat lost, basically, right? From the hotter environment, which is the sun, per day divided by the hotter temperature, the temperature of that hot object, basically. So here's your formula. So how do we do this? Well, how do we find the heat gained or heat lost per day? Well, they told us the watts, right, of the sun. So you gotta remember, watt is joule per second. So we can reorganize this in 380 times, a 3.80, excuse me, times 10 to the 26 watts, which is essentially joules per second. So this is the amount of energy being radiated from the sun, lost from the sun, gained by the deep space every single second. Well, they want it over one day. Well, how many seconds are in a day? Well, we can figure that out, right? There's going to be 3,600 seconds in one hour, and then there's 24 hours in one day. So look, lo and behold, we got it. So let's just calculate that. 3.8 times 10 to the 26 multiplied by 3,600 3600 multiplied by 24. So this works out to be about 3.28 times 10 raised to the 31st. Okay? So this is the heat energy that's being radiated from the sun. So this is the heat energy lost from the sun. But that energy goes somewhere, right? This is in joules. That energy goes somewhere. Well, it goes to the, uh, it goes to deep space. Okay? So now all I really need to do is plug this stuff into the formula here. All right, so let me just do this. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. Up on over to here and erase this. Hope you guys are having a good day today. Hopefully this is making your life a little easier in these interesting times. So um, the change in entropy then, the total change in entropy per day, will be then equal to the heat gained by the cold environment by deep space per day. Well, we just found what that should be. 3.28 times 10 times 10 to the 31st divided by then the temperature of that cold environment it's got to be in kelvin so here they told it to you in celsius so it's negative 273 excuse me negative 270 plus then 273 all right note that if you use 273.15 your answer might be slightly different than what i get that doesn't mean you know you're right i'm wrong or i'm right you're wrong it just means that we're just using a different, you know, uh, value here, and that's why it might be slightly, slightly off. Uh, so as long as you're in the ballpark, right, within a couple fractions of a percent, you're fine. So now this is going to be the heat lost by the sun is 3.28 uh, times 10 to the 31st. It's the same value, right, because whatever is gained by the deep space is lost by the sun divided by the temperature of that sun. So that's 550 degrees Celsius, but we need to add 273 to that to convert it into Kelvin. And now this is the total per day. Hopefully that makes sense now. So this is going to be, I'm gonna take that first value, divide it now by negative 270 plus then 273. And I'm gonna subtract from that now the 
exact value, the 3.2832 really times 10 to the 31st, divided them by 550, excuse me, 5,500, plus then the 273. <clears throat> and what do we get? I get a value of approximately 1.09, 1.09 times 10 to the 31st. And this is entropy, so that's joule per Kelvin, okay? And voila, that's the amount, uh, uh, that's the increase of, en uh, excuse me, increase in entropy in one day due to this uh, heat transfer, okay? Uh, so now, uh, so we got that out of the way. All right, let's take a look at now letter B. How much work is made unavailable? Well, this is basically the, uh, this is basically entropy change, right? The total entropy change, okay? Uh, what, what is gaining entropy and what's losing entropy? Well, we basically have that from the formula, you know, from the formulas here. The, the uh, deep space here is gaining entropy because it's positive, it's gaining heat. And then the sun is losing entropy, right? Basically, because it's negative, all right, negative. So how much work is made unavailable? What we now need to figure out basically is what, or consider that, let me write this formula down. So I'm just kind of rewriting, you know, this formula over here on the bottom uh, right. So this is gonna be the change in entropy, let's say, of the colder environment is then equal to the heat transferred into that colder environment. Right, divided by, uh, or I should say the heat lost. Maybe that's a better way to phrase it. The heat lost to that cold environment. All right, divided then by the absolute temperature of that environment. Now, here's the thing. If this is the change in entropy, all right, you might say, well, didn't I already calculate this? Well, not exactly. We calculated the total change overall. But now what we have to realize is that what I can reframe this formula slightly. Instead of kind of using these Cs a little bit, all right. All right. I can say something like this. The total, the entropy uh, of the system that was lost more or less. All right. It's not really lost, but let me, let, let me frame it this way. The heat energy that's used to warm up a cold environment is essentially lost to that cold environment. It cannot be used for work. All right. It's lost to the cold environment. So this, I'm going to, I'm going to call this Q sub L here. All right. So the heat energy lost is equal to the total, the entropy change now of that particular system divided by that then that temperature of that particular uh, system. And we're talking about the cold or deep space, right? The cold environment or deep space. So now the change in entropy is what we just found over here. This is 1.09 times 10 to the 31st. We're finding this. How much energy was basically lost or unable to do work? Okay, how much heat energy? All right, whatever is in heat energy is lost, then uh, it cannot be used for work. Uh, you kind of just, you know, just think about that. Like in terms of, remember when we were discussing efficiency a while back in this chapter, right? We're talking about the efficiency of a human or of an engine. Some of that, some of that energy that's being consumed, right, by that object is being lost as heat. That heat loss cannot be used for work. All right, so it's kind of the same idea here. So divided then by the temperature now of that, and it's negative 270 degrees Kelvin, uh, Celsius, but we need that in Kelvin, so we got to add the 273. And now, lo and behold, you can find the heat energy lost, all right, which is basically made unavailable, all right? So now we'll take that value, that exact value, 1.09 times 10 to the 31st, multiply it by now parenthesis negative 270 plus then 273, which is basically just times three, right? So there's going to be about 3.28, 3.28 times times 10 to the 31st, 31st joules, okay? Well, we realize that basically these are almost, I mean, if you're looking at these numbers, these are almost both the same, right? So for example, this is the amount of energy that was uh, produced by the sun. And then this is the amount of energy lost that's unable to do any useful work of any sort, okay? So they're almost the same. They're not, I mean, they look the same here, but if you look in your calculator and you look at the exact values, they're slightly, slightly different. Okay, so most of the heat energy here is just lost. It's unavailable to do work. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe and we'll see you soon. Take care.